Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, I'm Pastor Dan Slagle, and welcome to another edition of Postscript. Today we are with Lou Ann Riley, who brought us just a terrific Mother's Day message uh, entitled The Peace of God's Presence. Welcome, Lou Ann. Thank you. It was a great Mother's Day message. In fact, I, I said over on the West Side, I think it's the best Mother's Day sermon I've ever heard. Thank you. Uh, very, very well done. It elicited a, a range of questions mm -hmm. all the way from those merely seeking information to some pretty serious theological uh, issues. First question has to do with verse 11 from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, the reference to no razor touching uh, the child's mm -hmm. head. What is the meaning of that and is there any connection with Samson? Okay, so what they're referring to or what Hannah's referring to in this verse is a religious order of the Nazarite. And in this religious order, there were things that they couldn't do. Shave their heads. Right. Uh, their hair had to grow long. They couldn't eat grapes. There were uh, things that went with this religious sect. And so what I think is so interesting in this verse is sometimes we apply it as uh, God, we will raise our children. We will train them the way you want them to go. Sure. We will impart these things. But she's saying, I'm not just going to commit to raising him in the Lord. I'm going to commit to giving his life yes. to yeah. this religious order. So th so when she's saying, no razor will go to the head, he's going to be a Nazarite. And he'll eventually, she she does give, give, him, him, up. give yeah. him up where mm -hmm. he's raised by Eli and the, and the other priests. Sure. Um, and so that's the connection there that she's talking about when she's praying. Right. The uh, sort of the overarching emphasis of being a Nazarite was to be set apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it uh, shows incredible faith and courage on mm -hmm. Hannah's part that she would even entertain that that thought. Right, the child that she was so desperately praying for wasn't a child that she raised to right. adulthood. Yeah. It was a child that she gave back to the Lord. And then through him, eventually, we see Jesus come yeah, that's right. because of her faithfulness. Yep. Uh, yet, yet another reason why she's such a remarkable lady. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, questions get a little more challenging. Uh, in verse 5, it says, The Lord closed Hannah's womb. How are we to understand God's role in her infertility? By extension, how are we to understand God's role in our suffering? Okay, so let me try to answer this maybe uh, two ways. First, let's look at what it said, the Lord closed her womb. Um, what we what we do know is that a, a lot of times Hebrew writers will use uh, figures of speech or things. Um, at that time, they didn't have the medical diagnosis that we have. Sure. You know, I just yeah. was talking to a woman who was telling me her story, and she was saying what her medical diagnosis was for infertility, and I was like, "That's the same one that I had." Uh, they didn't have that. Um, and so the Lord closing a womb was often a way that they described infertility. They have the word infertility. Sure. Um, and so we can see that as a description, but as it fits into this bigger question that we're asking about, how are we to understand God's suffering, um, God's role in suffering, I, I think it continues to go back to what we were talking about today. In the Bible, God doesn't give us a clear answer to that question. Yeah, never, never a satisfactory um, you one. You know, we anyway. see in the book of Job this intense book of suffering of what Job goes to goes through, and at the end, I mean, he does cry out, "Why, why, why?" Mm -hmm. And all all people tell him all kinds of reasons why. Sure. Uh, he gets to the end of the book, and God does speak to him, but he never tells him why. He never reveals that to him or speaks to him. And I think in some ways, that's how we have to approach God and that we won't have all the answers and we won't understand. But what we can identify is that God knows suffering and yes. that he has walked that and he chose that. And so we know that our suffering 
doesn't, it's not in vain, it has meaning and that he's there with us in it, but we can't clearly ever, I don't think, and, and if we could, I don't know that that would be God. Yeah. The way that he is. Um, and so what we can know and rest assured that we see over and over and over and over in scripture is that he's close to the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. He's always in the midst of suffering. He's always bringing peace and hope and healing and times of mourning, he is there. Mm -hmm. And so we can trust that. Yeah, that is the continuing theme that uh, though we may not have all of the answers, we do have the presence of God. That mm -hmm. is the promise that he will be with us in the difficult days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. All right, one more question came in. How can we know if your desire is selfish or if we should even be pursuing it? Example, fertility treatment versus adoption or being at peace with your family the way it is, or trying to make a business work versus pursuing something else. In other words, how do you know when to keep praying and working and hoping and when to just say, okay, it is what it is? So I think what I've learned in my experience is that the desire that we're talking about today, we're talking about good desire, we're not talking about a sinful desire to have an affair or adultery or to sure. all these other things that have boundaries around them that would, would be a very clear answer. When we're talking about good desires like wanting to have a child or start a family, get married, um, pursue a new job. Um, these answers aren't the same for every person. Um, I have found that... Uh, when we're looking at something like for myself, when we were going through infertility, uh, it was important that I always had people that were speaking truth to me mm -hmm. um, because I could find at times, and I've, and I've spoken about it before in other sermons, where it had become the thing, mm. my obsession. I wasn't talking to God about anything else. Right. I wasn't pursuing anything else. I wasn't really open to anything other than this thing that I had. Almost like an idol. Yeah, like an idol. It can become an idol. Um, and I think when we're bringing these things before the Lord and we're evaluating in our life, we have to see where, what is the condition of our heart? Is our heart, is our affection for God and we're loving Him and we're pursuing these things? Or is this the thing that we continue to pursue without any open ears or eyes that God might be leading us to something to something different. You know, I didn't talk about it in my sermon, but um, even after we lost uh, Ruby, I continued to want more children. And mm -hmm. so the Lord surprised us with three pregnancies after that, which I lost all three. And then I remember my husband and I sitting down again with a fertility doctor who said, you won't be able to have any more children unless you go through all of these treatments mm -hmm. again. And I walked away with a piece right there of knowing like God is telling me to be content with what I have yeah. and that if he wants to grow my family, it'll be in some other way. And I had that clear piece right there that like this, this time is a, it's, it's no for me where maybe it was yes before. Um, being in his word, listening for his voice, having people around you who speak truth to you and to help you navigate mm -hmm. these things, having wisdom in your life, um, can help us answer some of these questions that we might have about our desires. So it's really not just one thing that's mm -hmm. going to give us the yay or the nay. We have to put ourselves in a place where there are any number of factors informing our decision. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Very good. Yeah. Again, such a good message. Thank you. Uh, I know it ministered to many people during the service, and I'm sure as we uh, put the message online, it will continue to minister to many, many more. Thank you. Great job. Thanks for being with us for another edition of Postscript. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.